Hello, everybody, and welcome to the podcast World Order Prediction Show for today's uh, Impact's No Surrender card. And my lord, we have so many matches. Did you say it was no? It, did you say it was no surrender? Yeah, is this not no surrender? Oh no, because I be, because I wore the wrong shirt. Uh, I, wore, <laughs> I see what yeah. you're doing. Okay, yeah, all yeah. right, yeah. all right. That makes okay. there we go. You had me confused there for a second. No. <laughs> um. Yeah, there's there's a lot of really good car uh, matches. I think that are gonna be good on here for tonight. Uh, hopefully we can roll through this. I'm I'm very excited for a certain one that we'll definitely get to here. Uh, but first up on the card we have Diener versus Jake something. Really, uh, finally christened as his actual independent name in Impact Wrestling. Jake something's here, and I gotta tell you, I think this is a Jake something win. That's my prediction there. Yeah, um, definitely agree. Um, this is the this is his time after kind of being beaten over the last hand, handful of weeks on impact. Um, it's time to make a name for himself. Um, it's time to stick it to the heels. Um, I think this will lead into a very in- interesting. <laughs> yeah. This will lead into a very in- um, interesting matchup with him and Eric Young, um, which I will fall in love to see. Um, but I also love violence by design. I Agreed. love the heel stable and i love that it adds another tag team to their division okay. everything they're doing is great what about you it, it was what funny you that you were saying that a guy well i was thinking it was funny that a guy named jake something is going to make a name for himself <laughs> <laughs> ah you got that okay <laughs> okay anyway um yeah i'm with you because we needed something to take the place of obe i mean we did there was a void there and so yeah very valid now we've got it yeah uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna agree i'm gonna agree with uh jake something all right up next it's matt cardona and eddie edwards versus brian myers and hernandez and uh maybe this is gonna be a weird take here i'm gonna take brian myers and hernandez by disqualification uh, I think Eddie Edwards, we already saw him kind of lose his mind a little bit here versus Brian Myers a couple weeks ago. I think maybe he uh, doesn't stop punching in a corner or something. Ri- not really ridiculous, but not Eddie Edwards. I think this might lead towards a uh, future Matt Cardona versus Eddie Edwards match. Yeah, agreed. Um, I don't know if it'll be by disqualification. Um, Impact has a habit of – um in in a match it'll either end end quickly or there'll be a disqualification win and then starting the match again under like no disqualification rules or something of that nature um so i don't know if that's going to happen here but i do agree um myers and hernandez i love the story of the hired gun um I think at this point in his career, it really fits Hernandez. So heels all the way. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to follow up on you right about the, you got to remember there's nine matches announced. So it's in their interest to have a match like this end quickly one way or the other. So I don't think we're going to see this one go 15 minutes. I mean, this is a, this is going to be a quick hitter um, for the storyline because, you know, this isn't, this is, there's there's more there's more to tell here so mm-hmm. yeah i think it's going to be a quick one uh you know i'm gonna i'll agree whatever whatever ryan said which i can't remember except for that it was going to be quick so i agree <laughs> i don't think it matters who wins all right yeah, up next right. <laughs> we have decay and black taurus um i, I have a really hard time with this because mm-hmm. they they said on the show black taurus and it's like it's taurus we could just say taurus that works, but I guess that might be not lucha libre enough. Um, I'm not. It's really Taurus, sure. by the way. Yeah, Taurus. Yeah. Sorry. In Spanish. Black um, Taurus. Uh, so it's Decay and Black Taurus mm-hmm. versus Triple XL and Tennille Dashwood. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, Decay is winning this. Um, Tennille Dashwood's going mm-hmm. to leave in the middle of the match, and Rosemary is going to pin Larry D. Wow. Because the whole thing is, um, is Larry D's not going to put his hands on her. So, well, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I agree. Decay's going over here. Um, I think a black tour Roos as kind of how we say rush, but it's Roosh. That's um, a good point. That's a good point. Um, but yeah, I, I completely agree. This is part of the storyline. Um, Rosemary, or this will be the time where Larry D will, you know, like, you know, power, power slam or something. Um, but either way, um, doesn't change the finish. Um, it's going to be decay. And if it's anything like they built uh, Tor, uh, Tor Roos up to be, this might be another quick match. All right. Mm-hmm. Could be. D. White, what you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to say that, um, you know, Larry D for a guy that basically they signed when their roster got emptied, you know, that he, he's been on the Indies for a while and been a really good signing. I think, I think he's probably exceeded expectations hugely. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to say hashtag. I love wrestle house. That's, that's all I'm saying. There you go. That's <sighs> always that's, one. That's, that's the true winner here. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yep. Next up we have six women's tag. It's Deanna Perrazzo, Kimberly and Susan. Versus ODB, Jazz, and Jordan Grace. Obviously, I think this is big time FaceTime. Uh, ODB, Jazz, and Jordan Grace here <laughs> win here. Um, yeah. Let's just say four four out of those six are in their prime. <laughs> yeah, two, two, two of these things four. are not like the other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna choose the heels on this one. Hmm, um, interesting. I am totally over the Susan gimmick. Agreed. I think um, she takes a nasty bump, um, perhaps off of the apron, and out from underneath the ring we get Sue Young. And this is obviously my hope that I will go ahead and predict um, Sue Young just comes out and murders everybody and gets the win for um, their team. As you see, Deanna Peraza and Kimberly back up, up towards, uh, up the ramp, as you see just Sue Young in, in the ring, just destroying everybody. I think, I think it's also what they need right now in the women's division. They don't need another cookie cutter Susan. They need somebody like a Sue Young, I think, to kind of, get a spark into the women's division. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, although I'm going to disagree with you on how I think this goes. I think, I think what we'll get is we'll get the faces going over, but we, but we point toward the end of the Susan thing. And I'd like to see it like, I don't want to see Sue Young against Susan in a casket match or a theatrical <laughs> casket match or something. You know I mean? But I yeah. would like the Susan gimmick to go away forever, <laughs> for sure. So, yeah, uh, Sue definitely. Young is just way more compelling to me, and I think when you when you compare Sue Young to like the other similar gimmicks, I think she does it so much better. It's especially because she's she's a pretty pretty good worker, and so you know if you put her in like Abaddon, even Rosemary at this point, and uh the, this that similar type she is almost like i impacts oscar really if you sue young is and and so i think we need her to be doing that rather than as uh, the susan susie whatever we just need to not have that happen anymore but you know she could have a fourth gimmick where she is like your typical knockout um and she comes out and she and she's just Susan Swan. Um <laughs> oh, yeah. it would it would have to be okay. Suzanne. Bruises excluded. Suzanne Swan. It would have Sorry, to be Rich. Su- no, no, just Suzanne. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oof. Oh no. Oh. No. Oh. And now I'm no. even more no. unexcited for the oh. main event. Um, but also i will say i do think this is more leaning towards the end of the susan gimmick they did kind of hint at it on tuesday uh something has to be done about susan uh so i'm kind of thinking maybe we get Susie back that's what i'm thinking i think we're gonna turn susan into Susie, and 
we're going to mold her into being a mean girl. Well, you know, I think if we, if we did it more to like, remember on BTE, like around all in when, um, when, when Jay Lethal would snap into the black machismo thing when he got hit in the head, mm-hmm. you know, that kind yeah. of moment. <laughs> Love it. And especially with all in, he, he came out and he was like fully in the black and cheese with, <laughs> thing. with, and with so the brother. I, yeah, I wish we would. I wish we they would do like something a little more along that line. And just if you're gonna gimmick it out, man, gimmick it out. Like let's get crazy. But yeah, um, I, I think I think as a wrestler though, Sue Young is 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 way more than Susie or Susan. I agree with that. All right. Up next, we do have the Triple Threat Revolver match to determine the number one contender. This is going to be, in my opinion, it already is. No matter what happens, it's the match of the night, I think. I think everything else Mm -hmm. kind of might pale in comparison. So let me explain this match real quick. So three competitors are going to start, and a new competitor will enter after someone is eliminated until everyone has entered. The final three competitors will battle until there is one winner by pinfall or submission. So this is, um, if you remember the dying um, months and year of the Cruiserweight Championship in WWE, they did a lot of Cruiserweight Opens. Gauntlet. Yeah, very, very much so. Um, they, well, I mean, they called it a Cruiserweight Open, but yeah. they would all essentially huddle around the ring. And if you got pinned, you were out, the next man came in. Um, I'm so in love with this match style. Um, it, it very much so. It very much so fits what 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 the X division should stand for. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited, I, and I think the talent they have in this are gonna just put on an incredible match. So we have Josh Alexander versus Willie Mack versus Trey Miguel versus Suicide versus Davari versus Blake Christian versus Chris Bay versus Ace Austin. Uh, you have, in my opinion, four incredibly incredibly talented guys there in their 20s um i don't know how old caleb conley is on, on the top of my head i i believe he's still in the suicide mask at the moment um oh how dare you how dare you yeah he's not competing um so i'm pretty sure it's him um i would say tjp but he's defending the title tonight so mm-hmm. eh, it could be well you know if it was tjp this would be manic That'd be the only mm-hmm. way we can get Manic versus TJP Impact, <laughs> Impact um, Wrestling. Uh, anyway. Be better. Be better. Well, um, but, but this is awesome. Um, I mean, this is it's, it's innovative-ish, right? I mean, we've yeah. seen this kind of thing done before, but like I've always said, and my you know my partner bro, uh, brother from another mother, Jeff Hitman Hall. This is what how triple threats are supposed to be. Like they were in ECW back in the nineties. Three, three guys, you eliminate one, then it's one on one. That's how you do three it. Right so I don't yeah. think I don't think this is that situation. I do think when there's the final three, it's the first one to get a pin or submission win. Correct. Yeah. Right. Up so in, it, but, it, but people get eliminated from the match, is what yeah, I mean. And that's yeah. What it is in the same mind mindset though. Yeah. Yes. I don't so, feel like we, we don't see this enough. Yeah. Right. We don't. I've been calling. Listen, I've been saying this on WrestleCast and prediction shows for a while now. The best way to do a triple threat is a three-way dance. It's the only way to do it. You can build story through triple threat matches, but the real way to do it is through a three-way dance. And I've been saying that for a while now. That's right. I was saying we 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 went over this on the on the WrestleCast there, so we don't need to do it here. So what I'm going to ask you guys is who's going to be your final three and who's going to be your winner. All right. So if you guys yeah, need a bit, well, I, I can like go ahead and start. <laughs> well, uh, ha, they ha, have they announced the order that they're coming in, or is this going to be random? Because uh, when I I, on random. my screen, when you just read it out, yeah, it's different than what I have on my screen. Random. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it. I think random. it is not well, established yet. Right. It's secret. All right. So. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start if y'all don't mind. So. Go ahead. I really. Really wanted to be Trey Miguel, Chris Bay, Ace Austin, and I would mm-hmm. really love to tell you that's what it's going to be, but unfortunately, I think Trey Miguel has another feud in mind, and he's not going to make it to the final three, so I believe it's going to be Blake Christian, Chris Bay, and Ace Austin with Blake Christian getting a pin over Chris Bay. 
Um, Ooh, I, okay. I think the Ooh. X Division champion is not going to be a face by the end of the night. So Ooh. I think we're going to need a new babyface contender. Ace Austin can continue the – he's being screwed by Impact because he's not pinned. And I think Chris Bay is wonderful. I think you can have something ridiculous happen where he doesn't really lose face. Maybe Chris Bay is one of the first guys in and goes the whole way. All right. Mm. Time time to get crazy. Get crazy. Right. I like it. Um, your final three are going to be um, Chris Bay, Ace Austin, and Sammy Guevara. Ah, <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. Yes, this um, is what I was hoping for. <laughs> yes, it is time to get crazy with this. Um, there's there's been so much talk um, this past week about the forbidden door being opened, and um, you know, just we have to we have to progress this a little bit. And I think that on Wednesday's dynamite, there was no there was no other perfect seg- segue than. Sammy Guevara pack, packing his bags, look looking like he's you know leaving Daly's place. Um, Sandy needs a break. Um, what a better way to make your impact than it, insert yourself as the number ninth person to be in this match. Um, and mm. you can pin Chris Bay because I'm predicting mm-hmm. Sammy Guevara is going to be your number one contender. Um, you can continue what you were just talking about, Matt, in the Ace Austin can you do to be screwed. Chris Bay doesn't need the win, mm-hmm. and he can eat the pin. Um, I think mm-hmm. other guys, though, that could be in Chris Bay's spot. Um, I think that you can have Willie Mack there as well. Um, but outside of that, I think you're really looking – if you're really looking to put this match on the map, really make a statement, and you can get Sammy Guevara in this match, you got to do it. Mm, I like it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I really and want that to you, happen. You, <laughs> you, you are not, Ryan. You're not the edgy one on this show, so I can't let uh, that's you true. be the one. That, you know. So, yeah. uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go even crazier than you. Get, that, honestly, well, not really. I'm actually gonna rip you off a little bit, but in a crazier tone. That's okay. That the final three is going to be Ace Austin, Chris Bay, and Suicide. Suicide wins the match. He pulls off the mask, and it's Sammy Guevara. I I can get on board with that. That would uh, be really great too. I can get on board with that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really so, excellent as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I don't I think like that's going to happen. I really really want it to happen, but I don't think oh, that's going to happen. But um, yeah, that, although, I'm just going to leave it at that because I want to be right. <laughs> although. I will follow it up by saying if it's not, if we don't see Sammy Guevara, I think they strapped the rocket to Ace Austin's back here. He did, he did win, um, yeah, Super X Cup. Um, so run with it, make him the number one contender, have him take it off of whoever the X Division champion is. Mm-hmm. I like that. I just don't think, uh, I just don't think the, the dynamics of the match are going to work out the way we think they will. Although it does say, um, and I'm going off of the Wikipedia reading on this, Ace Austin with, with Madman Fulton. Yeah. So there is there could definitely be some shenanigans. Um, shenanigans. And, he, and here's the other thing, too, is that in the old Cruiserweight Opens, you could get disqualified. So mm. I'm wondering if that will also play a role in this. Uh, I was wondering that as well. I know in the final three – it says it's pinfall or submission only, but yeah. there's nothing on the eliminations. Because if it's under triple threat rules, like like traditional, then, then it's no, it's fine. Then it's a no disqualification. But yeah. in a but in a gauntlet esque style like this, you could probably get disqualified. Is what I'm thinking. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm down. I'm, I'm excited. This is, I think, gonna be the most exciting match. With maybe the most in uh, most in ring talent, I think. Uh, um, I will say this: Hey, before you before Ryan poisoned my brain with the whole Sammy Guevara thing, I was gonna say Josh Alexander. To be honest with you, and, I was thinking uh, the same thing at first. I just feel like maybe we're not gonna push him immediately. 
Yeah, so I feel like I'm, if he gets the shot, I want him to win immediately. That's that's kind of my thing. Too. I really like Josh Alexander. I think he could be a star. Um, they just gotta make sure they don't let him get lost in the shuffle of things without uh, all ego. Ethan Page, who I gotta tell you, uh, I do think his absence from television is very evident. Yeah, for um, sure. Definitely someone who is missed uh, weekly. I can't wait for him to pop up somewhere. Up next, we do have our X Division title match. This is TJP versus Rohit Raju with Mahabalashira. Yes. And of um, course, we brought in the heavy. Uh, I am going Rohit Raju to become your two-time X Division champion. Um, I'll piggyback off of that. Um, I think... Um, I think bringing Shara back is an excellent choice. Um, he was the last Rinka King champion, um, unfortunately. Um, I always love to bring that up. <laughs> um, I think it is going to be Rohit Raju winning um, by disqualification. Um, oh. I think the I think we will continue to screw to screw Rohit um, mm-hmm. until. Until it's absolutely necessary, because while I would rather um, there be a title change here, um, I would really prefer whoever comes out as the number one contender in the Triple Threat Revolver to ultimately be the champion. And for that to happen, I don't think you can have Rohit be a transitional champion right now, considering just brought back Mahabali Shara. Um, so that's my mindset here. Um, Rohit Raju will win, but there will be no title change. Hmm. What, are you, what are you thinking here, Dwight? I, I'm thinking I agree, except for I think we are going to get a title change. And I think that um, Rohit Raju, as a, as a, a, a transitional champion, works because I think – um, I still look at the whole TJP manic thing. Is that sort of our, it's sort of already happened, right? We already did that. Yeah. And so now, and now with, with the whole AW new Japan, sort of all this stuff happening, it's like, okay, well, this was before let's, let's get on to what we're doing next. And so it's almost like resetting back to when Rohit won the title to begin with. So, um, you know, kind of sort of stole the title anyway. So you put it back on him whether you keep it on him or save it to lose it for that number one contender match. Gee, I don't know. I think it's. It's going to get interesting. I think. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think hopefully TJP is no longer champion. Uh, oh, man, so. no one, no one's character arc and impact has made me dislike them more than what they've done with TJP. I already wasn't an incredible TJP fan, but everything they've done with him with the manic stuff has just further made it harder to enjoy. Um, speaking of, and we, we kind of went in on this, I think, on the WrestleCast. Up next is the Texas Tornado No DQ Knockouts Tag Team Title Match. It's Fire and Flava versus Havoc and Nevaeh. Um and uh, I'm going with uh, Fire and Flavor because I don't think they're going to drop them on their very first defense. I think that would not be a great decision. Um, Hooker by Crook. It's not, a, it's not a great decision, but it's an impact decision. Um, I love how um, Havoc and Nevaeh have been booked as a late, a very dominant force to be reckoned with. Um, I don't like any of these people. I really don't. I could care less about this match mm-hmm. or the knockouts tag team division in general because um, if you want to hear more about my thoughts, you can check us out Mondays and Thursdays on the PWO <laughs> WrestleCast. <laughs> um, but I, if you're going to book them on your weekly show to be, to be a monster, um, I could see shenanigans. Um, yeah i I love using that word as a word um but you need um somebody to kind of stand on top of the mountain and kind of introduce newer teams to try and knock off you know the goliath i think um i i hate fire and flavor 
Not as much as Nia Jax, but it, it, I mean, they're close. Like they're really insufferable mm-hmm. at times. It's so bad. Um, mm-hmm. But those, but those are my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Dwight Light, know what you mm-hmm. think? I, I'm not. I don't want to talk about this um, long because I don't want to give the impression that I care what happens. But I think it's <laughs> going to be havoc in Nevaeh. There you go. The, the end. <laughs> yes. All right. Up next. Triple threat match for the Impact World Tag Team titles. It's the Good Brothers, the reigning defending champions, versus Beer Gun, James Storm, and Chris Saban versus AEW's Private Party. Um, I think Private Party is winning the belts. Is Matt Hardy supposed to be with them? I didn't catch that. So it yes. says that Matt Hardy is. Um, Lord only knows. Maybe yeah. Scott Demore try and changes that. My big thing, my big thought process on this is Tony Khan put out there that don't worry, Impact, I'm gonna be right back. Don't you worry. I kind of mm. feel like Tony Khan gonna insert himself into this, or have Jerry Lynn mm. do something on his behalf to set up an AEW well, champion. Okay. How about this? How about this? And I'll throw this out for you. Um, doesn't Sammy Guevara owe? Uh, Matt Hardy, money, according to in kayfabe. Yeah. And he owes him a favor, maybe. Yeah. Like, oh, I yep. don't know, maybe helping the private party win the tag team titles or something like yep. that. He stays a face because he's just telling him he's 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 settling out with Matt Hardy. So um, yeah, I think uh that's what I'm gonna go with, actually. All right, all right. Thank God, what you thinking? Good brothers retain. Um I don't like it, but um, there is going to be some shenanigans. Um, maybe a Kenny Omega run in. Yeah, there, there you go. Um, it's going to be a Kenny Omega run in to help them retain. Um, I do think that um, either Chris Saban or James Storm eat the pin to protect pri- private party, not to immediately squash the AEW reputation. Um, mm mm-hmm. So I am going to say good, good brothers um, will pin either Saban or Storm to retain and private party is not involved in the, in the decision, which will get them a singles title shot later down the road. I like mm-hmm. it. Maybe at a, what is it? Rebellion? Sure. Mm-hmm. Why not? All right. Mm-hmm. Time for the main event. It is. Rich Swan defending the Impact World Championship versus Tommy Dreamer for his 50th birthday. Rich Swan's winning. And this might be the <laughs> match I care about the least. I think this mm-hmm. I think this is the most definitive match you know who's going to win. Mm-hmm. Yep, Tommy Dreamer's older than me, so that's I'm just throwing that out there. Mm-hmm. Um, um and but I I think in this this is probably and I would say this because there's some other people that really probably need to go away. And so I don't know. I think Tommy Dreamer is just ahead of Jeff, of Jeff Hardy for the people that I need to go away. Um, and mm-hmm. so to- Tommy Dreamer needs to go backstage, do what he's doing, doing, you know, booking ag- agent stuff, doing what he's did and what he's done his whole career really is run the show from behind the scenes and stop booking himself at the top of the card. So um, I get it, but this is not 1998 anymore. So um, that was fun. Well, that was peak Tommy Dreamer, and everything since then has been downhill. So <laughs> we're, <laughs> just it just is. So God bless you, Tommy Dreamer. But uh, and then and I you know I really don't like Rich Swan, so that tells you how bad um, I'm, I'm really kind of tired of Tommy Dreamer. Yeah. I feel that. And I just feel like the story says it's yeah, it's got to be Moose versus Rich Swan. Like, the story says it has to be this. Yes. God, you got you got a big old smile on your face. Talk to me. I do. What do you think? Um, so, first of all, Rich Swan has been Impact World Champion for 110 days and counting. Um, which 110 seems like, days too long. Yeah. Um, guys, I told you I was going to be crazy. Oh um, no! Oh no! Hulk Hogan is going to win it. Give it to Hulk me. Hogan, Hulk Hogan showing oh, up. Oh. 
before the match, Tommy Dream will be found incapacitated backstage. We need a replacement on the spot. It's going to be Moose. Moose is going to defeat Rich Swan and be your Impact World Champion. Mm. Interesting, interesting. So, is that, so, is that so, sort of how Rich Swan beat Eric Young? Kind of like, like he just showed up surprised. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, ah, yeah. Um, uh, they had that whole fate face off in the ring Wednesday or, t- or Tuesday. T- Tuesday. Sorry, my days are all messed up because of the snow. They all and ice. the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, and you and you have Tommy Dreamer going on these, you know, rants from the heart. And you know, shoot style. You know, like, oh, you know, I I went toe to toe with you, Moose. You know, and you could tell that was really pissing him off. Just some of the things that Dreamer was saying. I feel like, um, yeah, we'll give Dreamer this. It's a throwaway match, but mm. why do we have to make it that? Why can't we inject a little bit of drama into this? Um, take Dreamer out of the match. Um, maybe Moose pops out of a birthday cake. Who knows? Um, you know, gives gives you know dreamer a heart attack, um, but that's what I think. I think Tommy Dream will not even be in the match. If he is, he'll come out from the back. He'll be ball bandaged up. Um, maybe Demore may get a triple threat. It's gonna be crazy. I'm telling you now, it's gonna be pulling stuff from their bum. And I say, at the end of the night, you will have Moose one hand the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, the other hand, the Impact World Heavyweight Championship. See, I like it, but it's not going to be Moose. Oh, no. You're going there, aren't you? Well, if anyone's going to replace someone to win a world title, (laughs) uh, and I think you already said that they're going to be... uh, Kenny Omega is going to help someone win or retain their tag titles, right? Correct. So what you're telling me is Kenny Omega is going to be at No Surrender? Yeah. And we need a new challenger for the world Absolutely. title? And yes. Kenny Omega is the belt collector? Yeah, that's not going to happen. Matt, I don't think it's going to happen either. Don't get, why yeah, would you give that away? Right, you need to advertise that. That needs yeah. to be built up. Mm-hmm. Now, you can certainly have him part of the shenanigans. But, shenanigans. Um, yeah, yeah I, but I, I, I think that's a long-term thing, not a short-term thing. No, nah, I'm with yeah. you on that. I think that's actually the smart thing is to hold off. I don't think Moose <laughs> wins it till he takes off Kenny Omega. That's my thing, though. So I think wow. I think Rich Swan's gonna find a way to duck Moose for as long as possible, or maybe if Moose takes out Rich Swan, uh, Moose takes maybe a two three month vacation. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna hear to say that I think uh, Rich Swan is a less credible Impact champion than Tessa Blanchard was. I'm just gonna say that he he just is. He's terrible. Yeah. But um, and for whatever, I guess we're gonna. He does need Moose is the is the heir apparent. He is the top guy. Yeah. So how we get to that, I'm I'm interested to see. Uh, this match just needs to be. It, it, I like the crazy factor because that's probably true. Because ordinarily, with I mean, just without the crazy, there's no way this is worth watching. And so yeah, that was the main some, event. That's for sure. Yeah, let's do some crazy. So let's do some. Yeah, crazy. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, guys, that's that's Impact Wrestling. What what's the match you're most excited for? Are we all are we all thinking it's the Triple Threat Revolver? Yeah. Uh, it's when it's waiting for Sammy Guevara to show up. That's <laughs> and and if he doesn't, it's gonna be like make the whole thing not worth it to me. Honestly, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like that's my fault. No, I mean it's it's yeah. AEW's fault for the way they ended it's Dynamite true. Wednesday night. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. So with that, guys, why don't you guys put in the comment section down below what you guys think on who was going to win everything, pick your decisions, all that good stuff. Tell us what you think. Tell us how horribly wrong our decisions are. Mm-hmm. Uh, let us know. We want to see. And with that, I hope you all enjoy the show. We'll see you all uh, for the WrestleCast on Monday when we talk about the show. Or maybe you're going to go and check out our NXT predictions that's going to be coming up shortly after this 
And with that, we must bid you all adieu. Goodbye. Good night. Enjoy Impact No Surrender. Bang. Bye, everybody. <laughs>